So hi everyone, I'm Fleming, I'm a PhD student at MIT, and in this presentation I would like to talk a little bit about dynamical low rank approximation in Julia. Um, but before I get into that, I would like to add some context to this talk by briefly reminding everyone that the notions of data compression and low rank matrix factorizations in many cases go hand in hand. And I believe that image compression is one of the archetypical data compression problems showcases that quite nicely. So given such a grayscale image here, we can actually think of it as a big matrix where each matrix entry gives us the shade of gray of the corresponding pixel. And in order to compress this image now, we can attempt to find, for example, such two tall and skinny matrices here that when we multiply them together, return the original matrix. And you know, this is what one would refer to as a low rank factorization. And in this case, the rank is R, and this can, for example, be identified using the SVD among many other techniques. So, and if the image is very structured like this one here, uh, that may actually be possible without losing any information in the process. But of course, not any matrix or data set will admit such an exact low rank factorization. So instead is actually much more common or a much more common problem to seek a low rank factorization that provides for some purpose, a good enough approximation of the original matrix or in this case image. So for example, here we can compress the image, but then the reconstruction is no longer perfect yet perhaps good enough, depending on what the application is that we need it for. So I think this begs a few questions. The first one is what happens when we are faced with a data stream? So for example, we could have experimental time series data or some high fidelity simulation results. And then it stands to reason that taking the SVD at every frame of this movie, for example, may be too expensive. So what do we do then? And uh, maybe more importantly, not all data is actually known explicitly. So for example, we are often only having access to expensive to evaluate high fidelity physics models, but would still like to get a compressed approximation of their solutions without actually having to solve these expensive models in the first place. And in fact, propagating uncertainties through very expensive space weather models was our main motivation for working on dynamical low rank approximation, which is one way to answer these two or address these two issues. So let me introduce the concept of dynamical lowering approximation quickly. The setting is that we are given some intractably large explicit matrix valued ODE and note in particular that this framework includes the cases I just talked about. So this could describe a semi-discretized PDE model, or alternatively some sort of data stream where the um, right hand side just encodes how the data, for example, frames of a movie changes over time. And assuming that the solution of this ODE admits a good rank R approximation at all instants of time, dynamical low rank approximation attempts to identify this approximation via this alternative dynamical system. And don't worry too much about the notation here. On the right is my attempt at illustrating the intuition behind this construction. And the idea, I would say, is not too complicated. We start with some low rank approximation of the initial data, and then we look at our dynamics F showing us how the data evolves and then using that in order to inform how we should you know, evolve our low rank approximation or update it. So in general, of course, the dynamics will point out of the manifold of rank R matrices, meaning that the true solution of our model or the true data actually does not live directly in the manifold of rank R matrices, but is somehow higher dimensional. So in order to update our low rank approximation, we will instead evolve it according to the projection of the true dynamics onto the tangent space of the rank R matrix manifold. That way we ensure that our approximation remains low rank and at the same time, we in a certain sense minimize the error that we accumulate in the process of making that update. So computationally, this is done by starting with some low rank factorization of the initial data and then propagating the factors forward in time. In some ways, that is very much alike standard numerical integration, but in other ways, it's actually very different. So in particular, for this to not only be memory, but also computationally efficient, it is actually imperative to take advantage of the low rank structure of the input whenever we evaluate the dynamics F here and uh, its projection onto the tangent space. So, and as a consequence, at least to the best of my knowledge, there exists no general purpose software out there for using dynamical low rank approximation. And instead, all implementations are kind of handcrafted and tailored to a given application to take advantage of these structures. And to address that gap, I created two packages, lowrankintegrators.jl and lowrankarithmetic.jl, which in conjunction are an attempt to enable a rather non-intrusive use of dynamical low rank approximation in generic settings. 
So both packages are embedded in the Julia ecosystem as shown here. In particular, lowering integrators.jl implements the best performing and best sort of understood lowering integration routines out there uh, and draws quite heavily on differential equations.jl. Uh, in order to efficiently solve certain sub problems that arise in these routines, which are standard you know, or standard uh, numerical integration problems. And on the other hand, we have uh, low rank arithmetic.jl, which is playing a key role in allowing, to, allowing us to exploit low rank structure when we evaluate our model dynamics and project them uh, with, without really requiring any custom uh, implementations for these operations. So I think it's worth mentioning how this is achieved. In particular, I would like to remind you that the notion of low rankness is actually in a certain way uh, preserved under a rich set of operations. So for example, the product of two matrices has rank at most that of its factors. And when we add two matrices, for example, the rank may increase. However, the rank is bounded by the sum of the ranks of the two factors. And similar bounds apply for component-wise multiplications and powers. So this non-exhaustive list here already suggests that we may be able to take quite a bit of advantage of low rank structure when we evaluate models from the rich class of polynomial models at low rank inputs. And what's computationally key now is the observation that many operations not only result in bounded rank growth, as I just argued, but actually preserve the structure of common low rank factorizations. So for example, this two-factor representation or this SVD-like uh, three-factor representation. And at the bottom, you see an example where given inputs in these formats, addition simply reduces to concatenating uh, the individual factors of the inputs in an appropriate way. And using rules like this, low-rank arithmetic.jl arithmetic now simply facilitates uh, propagating such low-rank factorizations through finite compositions of the supported operations alongside some ancillary functionality such as rounding and orthogonalization procedures. And doing this can allow us to actually speed up certain computations quite dramatically without having to write tailored code in the first place. So for example here, propagating a low rank factorization through such a nonlinear advection diffusion operator, we see substantially better scaling when, uh, with respect to the site dimension of the matrix input compared to doing this computation naively on the full matrix. And to show you how everything I talked about so far can come together, I would like to briefly go over an example from the realm of uncertainty quantification. In particular, here I'm interested in understanding how the solution to this PDE, which is the nonlinear Burgess equation, behaves in consequence to different initial conditions as dictated by the realization of some random variable omega here, according to this function. And on the right, you see that depending on how this uncertainty is realized, the initial condition can actually vary quite a bit uh, within this envelope. So, and now to translate this problem into a form that is directly amenable to dynamical low-rank approximation, we can think of the spatial and stochastic domain as discretized, or put differently than the state of this problem is a large matrix, where each row corresponds to a fixed position in space, and each column to a fixed realization of the uncertainty, or a fixed initial condition in this case. So using low rank integrators.jl now, it requires us only a few lines of what I would call pretty intuitive code to apply dynamical low rank approximation to find an approximate solution to this problem. And if we compare the solution to the full solution, meaning where we actually solve this problem or this PDE very accurately for all the different initial conditions separately, we actually see that we incur only a 5% error for rank 15 approximation, but in return gain a 20x speed up. But um, more importantly, actually, we see that this approach is a lot more scalable than sampling naively, in the sense that, scaling, that the scaling is sublinear with the number of samples that we draw. So by choosing the rank of this approximation, it allows us kind of to choose a trade-off between scalability of the resultant sampling procedure and the accuracy of the result, which is usually fundamentally different from just drawing more or less sample, samples uh, with naive sampling. And this is, of course, not the only interesting application of these ideas. Um, I personally find applications in the realm of stochastic chemical kinetics very intriguing. And sadly, I don't have time to talk about this in much detail. So I just wanted to show you that for this example here, we can speed up simulation by about a factor of 50 while incurring minimal, arguably inconsequential amounts of error. And of course, there are many other interesting applications conceivable. 
And with that, I would like to thank everyone who's watching this for your interest. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for making JuliaCon possible this year. And of course, I would like to thank the NSF for funding this work.